Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video here on FBL Now. Today we're going to be going over my final team selection for game week 12 and the transfer that I'm most likely going to be making. So if you're excited for the video, drop a like down below, leave a comment what players are you bringing in for game week 12, subscribe if you're brand new and let's get into the video. So, starting things off, in goal we do, of course, have Ariola. I'm going to be playing him because Turner seemingly has been dropped by Steve Cooper for Forrest. So, right now, Turner is just going to be gathering dust on my bench. Just like he's most likely going to be gathering dust on the bench in real life, unfortunately. I don't think he really did too much wrong. Obviously, it did mess up against Liverpool and stuff. But to be fair, our alternate goalkeeper played really, really well against Villa. Didn't really have a lot to do, but when he was called upon, he did play very, very well. So, there's no reason for him to lose his spot. Um, but yeah, I mean, Forest against West Ham, that could easily go either way. Um, our away form isn't terrible, but West Ham also haven't been winning games at the moment. So, yeah, I, I don't think they're going to concede. I, I think they are going to concede like both teams this week. But I think it'll be like a 2-1 to, to either way, really. Um, but, yeah, Ariola in goal hopefully can, like, get a couple of save points. It's always difficult when your FPL team is playing your actual football team because you want both things. But, unfortunately, that's not possible. I mean, in an ideal world, Ariola saves a penalty. But Forrest win, like, 3-1. That would be perfect. But either way... Ariola's in goal at home to Forest. Not going to be playing Turner, obviously. Um, at the back, we have Cash, who's got Fulham at home. Now declared fit. Very, very happy about that. So I don't have to worry about that transfer anytime soon. He does have Spurs away next week. But with how weak and Spurs are now, like, I'm, I'm absolutely fine playing players that are going to be playing Spurs. Because at the moment, apart from, like, Sun and a few other players, they have literally got a B team right now. Um, at least in, like... The, the, the back line and stuff. They're going to be playing like their dire and, uh, and stuff like that. So it's going to be very interesting how they do against Wolves this weekend. But either way, Cash being at home to Fulham and um, being declared fit, very, very happy about. Simi Cash at home to Brentford is an interesting one. In the Europa League last night, he made a massive mistake, which led to Liverpool conceding. I do believe he came off as well early. Um, so I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't know if he took him off because he was just having a terrible game or it's good because he's been rested now. So he definitely will start the Brentford at home game. We do have Klopp here saying that like he is the, the first choice left back after obviously uh, Robertson. But I don't know, like Gomez could easily play instead. So it's it's one of those really. Do I risk playing him and then if he's benched, it's going to just obviously be terrible. Or do I just play him regardless and just hope for the best. But either way, as of right now, we're obviously he's in the back line. But that could easily change with my free transfer this week. And then finishing off the back line, we do have Anderson at home to Everton. So all at home. Uh, for my back line and my goalkeeper. So that's always very, very nice. But yeah, I'm really hoping Anderson just gets something um, that obviously Mitchell and Mark Gay and stuff don't get just because of how much more expensive he is than those. I will be selling him obviously when the fixtures uh, take a turn for the worst for um, for Crystal Palace, but that's not until like game week 16. So I'll be keeping him for the next four. So I'm absolutely fine with that. But I do hope he gets some sort of attacking return or something. Otherwise, I may as well just got a uh, Mitchell or Gay. It's nice having a little bit of money saved up in him though, because he is a 5.1 uh, million defender. I think I can sell him for like 4.9. Hopefully, he goes up to 5.2 if he keeps like a clean sheet again or gets an attacking return this weekend. And then I can just sell him for 5 million. I would have made like 0.3 on him, which I was which I'd be very very happy about. And that'll just help in the long run anyway. Way, especially with the midfield when I'm trying to get Mbumo back in. But uh, yeah, that's the back line. Really, really happy with it. Um, and hope, I mean, it can't do, it really cannot do worse than last week, let's be honest. The bar was set so low last week. We can only hopefully go up from there. But either way, that is the back line and the goalkeeper. In midfield, we have He Chan playing Spurs at home. Absolutely fine playing He Chan. Obviously, uh, Udogi's out. Um, the, the Romero's out. Their other centre-back is out um, with a hamstring injury. And as well as that, Poro also apparently hasn't trained or something. So their whole back line could literally be out. And they're going to have to play like a completely different different back line. So if I'm a he Chan, I'm licking my lips at that. Because that is definitely a game that Wolves can come out and attack. Now, I don't necessarily think Wolves are going to smash them. But I think that they are going to be... I'm, I'm much more happier playing him now with how badly Spurs are kind of like, with the, like the, the situation they're in, as opposed to what I was kind of uh, taking a look at playing him against them. So yeah, hopefully he chan can get something against Spurs uh, because he's a massive differential as well. So yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens there. But uh, another home fixture, obviously. We then have Bowen, who's at home to Forest. I mean, his home form hasn't actually been that good. His away form has been ridiculous. You could probably see where the away games are because it's whenever he bloody scores. Um, at home to Everton, 
nothing. Away at Brentford, scored. Away at Villa, scored. At home to Newcastle, nothing. Away, uh, well, that was at home, Sheffield United scored. Scored at um, Liverpool, uh, scored at Luton, scored at Brighton. Um, and then scored at Bournemouth as well. So his away fixtures are just absolutely insane for him. Uh, so it's at home this weekend. It's against Forest. But I don't know. I feel like, you know, West Ham, are, they're doing okay. They're just, the, the results aren't going for them. But they are still scoring goals. They're creating a lot of chances. So I'm absolutely fine playing with Bowen. Um, he's also like the talisman as well. I think they should just play him up front and just bench Antonio. I don't really think he offers too much in that uh, in that West Ham lineup. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe as a West Ham fan, you could probably tell me if it's worth playing him or not. But from what I've seen, I just don't think he's worth it. Um, I think he's a little bit past his prime, maybe. But either way, Bowen and Heath Chan are there. We've got Salah, who's my current captain with Brentford at home. I don't think that Haaland is a bad captaincy at all, especially because he's been like... Obviously, he just scored a brace in the Champions League. I don't know. I just think at home to Brentford, they have been conceding quite a few goals. They did just concede two against West Ham. And they haven't kept a clean sh uh, too many clean sheets, really. So, uh, yeah, hopefully Salah can uh, can do something. I've been getting my captaincy wrong every single week. I even got it wrong last week. Like, Haaland got one point and Salah got two, which obviously is a massive difference. But I still got it wrong. I've, I've got it wrong like the last five weeks in a row. So, it's not ideal. Um, either way, Salah is my current captaincy at home to Brentford. Saka at home to Burnley. I am, I'm, I'm not too worried. Obviously, he is flagged, which isn't ideal. But Arteta definitely downplayed the injury. He said that it's not going to be that bad. I think he'll start. I just don't think he's going to play the full 90, which is why I'm not going to captain him. Before, I probably would have captained him, but... You know, um, I just don't think it's worth it if he's going to come off on like the 70th minute or something like that, which is most likely going to be the case. But either way, 70 minutes at home to Burnley, hopefully is still decent. Also, he got a goal and assisted in the Champions League midweek. So hopefully he can bring that form into that uh, home fixture against Burnley. But uh, yeah, I'm obviously going to be playing him. Hopefully he's all good. And then we also have Sun, who is away at Wolves. I, I would both, I would like both he Chan and Sun to do wonders this week. But with the injury to Madison as well, like he's out for one to three months now. He's done a really bad ankle injury uh, or He's got a really bad ankle injury, should I say. He had to withdraw. Uh, he's withdrawn from the England squad. So, uh, yeah, as Madison owners, I think it's time to move on maybe to a Saka, maybe downgrade to a Bowen, uh, maybe even Boomer. I mean, Boomer still has some pretty bad fixtures over the, like, the next couple. Um, I think game week 14 is really when you when you want to target Boomer. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's definitely time to get rid of Madison 100%. And obviously, that will affect Sun um, because they've lost their back line. They've lost Madison as well. They've lost Richarlison as well. Um, so, yeah, it's not really going too well for, for Spurs. I think I still think Sun is capable of scoring goals and stuff, but obviously... Losing all of those players is not going to be ideal at all for Spurs. And I think they're definitely going to feel it. I think the international break is definitely coming at the right time for them. So hopefully they can get a few players back. But either way, that is uh, that's my midfield there. And then up top, we have Watkins at home to Fulham. And then we also have Haaland away at Chelsea. Absolutely fine with that up front as well. Watkins, I believe, scored as well last night. So all of my players are bloody scoring in Europe. But they're just not scoring in the bloody Prem where it matters. Um, but uh, yeah, either way, very happy with Watkins at home to Fulham. And then as well as that, uh, Haaland, yeah, away at Chelsea. And then the bench is Turner away at West Ham, Archer away at Brighton, who I could also play, you know, if, if it is out that like Saka is injured or whatever, and then I could easily just play at, uh, Archer, Brighton away. I mean, they haven't kept a clean sheet all season, so uh, I'd be happy with uh, playing him there. Kabore away at United, and then also Burn away at Bournemouth. Again, I would have played Bournemouth, uh, I would have played Burn away at Bournemouth this week, but of course, he has suffered that lower back injury. So let's move on to my transfers. I have 0 0.2 in the bank uh, with one free transfer, obviously. Now, I mean, on paper, the team's fine. Like, if Simicast is definitely going to start, I don't think I need to make a transfer. Like, I could bring in Gabriel for Burn, which, again, is the most... I think that's the smartest option, bringing in Gabriel for Burn. But at the same time, he's not guaranteed to start. Um, and if he gets rested, then I'm in a really bad position because I brought him in and it it'd just be a waste of a transfer, really, and I'd lose all my money in the bank. So... I think, like, obviously Saliba's gone up in price as well to 5.3, so I can't even do cash to Saliba now, which is really unfortunate. So that's really the only transfer that I could probably make this week. Again, I'm going to want to have a transfer or maybe two in game week 14 to bring in Bumo in, and I think that'll be a double transfer kind of situation. So um, obviously if I made a transfer in game week 12, I'd go into game week 13 with one and then game week 14 with two. So it doesn't really matter that much, but... I kind of want to bring in a defender that's going to have a few decent fixtures over like the next couple and there's not really anyone that like jumps out at me like West Ham obviously have nice fixtures I've already got Areola um, Arsenal have good fixtures can't afford Saliba could afford Gabriel but I don't really know if it's worth it in that respect so in that regard so I don't really know what to do here rolling is maybe in my best interest the only problem is burn is going to go down in price 
and um, if he does go down in price I'm going to lose 0.1 meaning that I won't be able to go to Gabriel in the future so if I if I'm going to make this move I have to do it now and then obviously if uh, if I do bring in Gabriel I would just play Gabriel over Simicast um, just to I mean, I'd like to say have that guarantee starter, but it could even be the situation where Gabriel is benched and then Simicast starts. So it's, uh, yeah, it's not ideal at all, but that's kind of the situation I'm at. So I think it's just going to be one of those last minute decisions, really deciding what I want to do, because I think I don't think the team's that bad next week either. Like, um, obviously, I've got Burnley uh, away for Ariola and uh, Bowen. Like, they're all, like, decent fixtures. Obviously, I'm not going to be playing Simicast, um, who's got City away. So I'll be playing Anderson, I'd be playing, I'd probably be playing Anderson, Gabriel in cash if I made that transfer, obviously. Um, and then obviously just a, yeah, 3 5 2 again. But uh, yeah, the fixtures are uh, like fine for next week. So I wouldn't have to make a transfer going from like 13 to 14, uh, from, uh, from 12 to 13. And then yeah, for 13 to 14 is when I'd want to be bringing in Light and Bumo. I don't know who I'd even get rid of, maybe. It's, I'd, hate, I'd either have to drop. Bowen, who I don't really want to, uh, who I don't really want to drop. I can't really upgrade him from He Chan because I need to find like 1.3 from somewhere. And I just don't know where I'm finding that money, um, unless I like downgrade a bunch of other players. But I'd just be taking hits all over the place. So I think the only option really is go from Bowen to Mbumo, which I don't really want to do. It would save up a little bit of funds, especially because Bowen's price just keeps going up, and I think it will keep going up as well now that Madison's injured because it's just such an easy swap from Madison to Bowen. Um, but yeah, obviously I've got him for Forest and Burnley, and then if game week 14 rolls around and I do want to get rid of him, like Crystal Palace at home is a good fixture. Um, it, there's no reason to sell him for that. And then Spurs, Fulham, and Wolves. Like, there's no reason to get rid of Bowen. It's just Mbumo has some really, really good fixtures coming up. If I actually go to uh, to what he's actually got, he, um, game week 14 onwards, he has Luton at home, which is a fantastic fixture. Brighton away, fantastic fi uh, fixture. Sheffield United away, fantastic fixture. Then they've got Villa. And then, obviously, they blank in game week 18. And then they are uh, most likely going to double in 19 or whatever. Um, so I need like a couple of Brentford players there and obviously a couple of City players. But either way, we'll have to think about it. But regardless, that is my team going into game week 12. I I'm, I'm probably going to roll, but I don't know. I'm going into next week with two free transfers would be really, really nice. But either way, we'll have to see what happens. But yeah, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like down below. Leave a comment, subscribe if you're brand new. And until next time, peace.